Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, family. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Uh, to all those who are in the Mental House today, I want to thank you uh, for being out there. I appreciate you very, very much. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there's a few of y'all that I just want to shout out and make sure I keep on shouting y'all out because um, I really I appreciate those of y'all who come into the mental house aren't um, shy about leaving comments and um, I thank you for that because uh, it's kind of hard to get people to talk about emotional stuff or things that are you know, uncomfortable. It's much easier to do um, what you say, reviews or talk about celebrity news and things like that. Those are things that are very exciting, but this kind of stuff right here is not very exciting at all. And then, you know, hey, it's okay. You know, so because if one person come in there or two people come in there and it does something that make you think about something or it helps un uh, clarify something for you, or just that you know that you're not alone in something, thinking something, then that's that's fine too. So I just want to give a few shout outs. I want to uh, give a shout out to Mr. Lou Meth Yanni. I want to give a shout out to uh, Claudia Branch, Adia 857 Star, Nation Wizzle. Tierra Grant, Rough Alo, you already know. We go back a long way as well. <laughs> Elmer Rodriguez, Sup, how about Chase and Chase? Uh, thank y'all. Coco, thank you for being out there as well. Um, So I just wanted to give my shout outs today. But I want to talk briefly about something that I ran into. Um, you know, a little controversy with with one of the people on my page, and that's because they must have saw an older video, and it was a video where I was talking about the betrayal of Jesse Jackson uh, to Dr. Martin Luther King, and I was also talking about how everybody wants to relegate Dr. King, especially during Black History Month, relegate him to a dream as if he never woke up, and because that little segment of that speech that he didn't write obviously that they're coming out to find out now or but it, it was really Mahalia Jackson you can hear her in the background if y'all ever listen she go tell them about the dream Martin I love that part actually but Martin wasn't even going there with that dreams thing okay she told him tell him about the dream Martin and I stand by that a lot of y'all want to argue you know with people that were alive during the 60s or late 60s and early 70s and to me it's just preposterous it's just crazy there are some things that might be a little you know blurry in our memory but some of y'all was barely born and you wasn't born at all and so the only thing you going by is what somebody said now, you see why I read it in the book. Okay, it's still what somebody said. Because if I'm talking to somebody that had boots on the ground right then and there, I want to believe them before I believe some, you know, somebody else. You get what I'm saying? So to me, that is validation in a lot of areas. If I talk to if Brother Hosea Williams was still alive. And I talked to him about Jesse Jackson not wanting to wear a tie. And then I, and and to know that all the FBI friendlies wasn't wearing ties. Um, I would ask him to answer to me why he didn't wear no tie. Right? This is because of information that we know today. Uh, I would also take notice that if Dr. Reverend... Abernathy was alive, I will be like, okay, he always had a tie on. Well, well, well. Dr. King, Andrew Young. Now, all these people might be older now and um, the ones that are alive 
you know, I'm sure there's a lot of things they could say about that time, right? But so, but the ones that were there with boots on the ground that remember Reverend Bevel and the things he did. Some of y'all did the same thing to me when I did a tape about Reverend Bevel. That was one of my earlier uh, tapes. Y'all, somebody done called my personal family members and everything. The point I'm trying to make is some of y'all are just infidels. You know, you're not going to believe anybody that got a religious uh, moniker on their name. Some of y'all just, especially in the black community, we just looking for, uh, oh, he a lie. Uh, instead of thinking that everybody has, um, nobody is going to be on a universal path. They all taking a path to get to the same place. Okay. I don't, we monolithic. I don't have to think exactly like you, but I still want to get there where you're going. And then, and then you idolize and you dream about this place called Africa as if there's not a whole bunch of countries and the people that live in Africa don't even call Africa, Africa. And that there's not dissension and tribal ideologies that are different. It's okay. Just because they dumped us all in Americas and made us slaves here and we were all the same colors here, they still don't mean we didn't have different minds because don't forget we were brought from different tribes. Even if you could just remember that on the elementary level, it should be like, okay, every skin folk ain't kin folk. Okay? So we have to get out of that thinking first and foremost. And if we can't, it's going to be real hard for a lot of y'all to move forward. Some of y'all let this scheme kill y'all to a degree where you can't even lose, use your own intelligence. For instance, I've heard it said many times before that if you are a real leader, you will be assassinated. If you're not a real leader and you're really in bed with white people or the government or whatever, then you're not going to be assassinated. Okay, I don't know how to even first address that. And so then they bring up things like Farrakhan. You know, the only reason Farrakhan is still alive is because he's a mole. And, um, which is, to me, in my opinion, so disrespectful. Uh, so disrespectful. Um... While I may totally disagree with Farrakhan's ideology about anything, um, it could be uh, anything. I can't even think of nothing right off the bat. But if it was, I can still eat the meat and throw away the bone. And I'm not going to be as, re in my spirit to think, in my opinion, how come... Farrakhan would be alive and he didn't get assassinated but neither did Elijah Muhammad and he was his teacher and if he was the teacher of Elijah Malcolm, Khalid Clarence and all that those brothers you know I know Clarence 3x from the guys of nation earth but my point is if he was a teacher how come Clarence wasn't killed how come Elijah wasn't assassinated because a lot of y'all will say y'all don't rock with Farrakhan at all. You believe in just Elijah Muhammad because he told the truth and la 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 la. But he wasn't assassinated. See, what it is is there are certain ways, like I said, we have all different minds that way people want to do things. If I want to get there with you and you want to get here and you want to get there that way, your blueprint might be different. You just might, might want to jump out on Shaquille O'Neal and all his seven foot army. And if they blast you to kingdom come, like you know they're going to do, then you become a martyr. Well, there may be some other people that may, may still be in leadership, but they might have a different strategy. They may not have that kind of strategy where I'm just going to bust out on you by myself without an army, without this, and just say, blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. And, and, wait a minute, and this is no way am I taking away from Dr. King. Dr. King had too many moles around him. Y'all see them all. That's why he got dead. Okay? Same thing with Malcolm. 
Who moved away? Who didn't check the uh, brothers coming in? It was infiltrated, like a lot of these organizations. Infiltration. The same reason that Farrakhan did a big cleanup of the Nation of Islam about the, the, the temples made about 15 years ago. Because he found out there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of unbelievers that were pretending to be believers. And when I say that, I say it because a lot of black people just want to reject our spiritual component, period. I don't, I'm not that black person. I know that I'm not that, I'm not that um, ignorant where I don't think that I'm a spirit having a human experience as opposed to the other way around. I don't care what none of y'all think at this age. I mean, who cares? But you will find out when you start getting older and older and you can start seeing the difference between your spirit and your body. Actually, and when your spirit, when your body actually seems like can bear witness to your spirit, then come talk to me. If not, then you haven't gotten there yet. It's just that simple. So when you concentrate on spiritual things and you're a spiritual person, it doesn't mean you have to let go of the things that need to be done on the other realm. But you have to keep tuning up your finding, tuning your spiritual development. And when you do that, you're able to do things in a different way. You may have a different strategy, but you may have, um, that's totally up to you. I'm not saying what's right and what's wrong. I'm saying it's a matter of choice. There are a lot of people that are that, that, that got killed in the 60s because the last real president was John F. Kennedy. And once he was gunned down before the whole world, see, I remember this. It just changed things, okay? The gangsters got into office, period. And people were getting shot down at that time, like 90 going north. Kennedy, Malcolm, just kept coming. Um, they was just all getting shot. Fred, you know, Fred Hampton, I don't even know if he got shot. Martin Luther King, I think he, I think Fred Hampton got shot after that. Bobby Kennedy, it was just a mess, an assassination mess to all be compacted in that 10 year period in the 60s. Maybe less time than that. Maybe from 62 to 69. There was so much assassination that America lost her innocence and so did a lot of people. But I don't buy into that train of thought that if you survive, like H. Rap Brown or Stokely Carmichael, it must be because you were protected by the government. Um, I think it was you, 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 those the people that were there. Maybe they learned from the people before them, and maybe they vetted a little better. Maybe they they kind of controlled the moles because the moles were there since Marcus Garvey. So maybe they had an idea that okay, we know this is a this is a in uh, a infiltrator right here. Maybe that type of intelligence got sharper. But there's a lot of reasons why. Um, you can, and a lot of leaders were driven mad because of the disappointment that they have in us and how we dropped the ball. So, yeah, I take all that into consideration. And I'm saying this especially to Stephen because, you know, we go back and forth. But that's my honest opinion, Mr. York. There's a lot of different ways to get to the same outcome. And just because some people might have wanted to go it that way. The, 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 the battle, the, the end game was freedom from, from oppression. Bobby Seale is still alive. He ran for mayor. He lost. Bobby Rush is in Congress. He's a sellout is what y'all say. Barack Obama tried to beat him, but the people still believe in him. Because uh, people can access government funds does that mean that they're a sellout? 
Are you crazy? As much stuff that this government allowed was allowed to happen to us through Jim Crow, Ku Klux Klan, um, you know, black codes and all that, the government allowed those uh, domestic terrorism acts to happen against black people, and you don't think that any of these leaders should be able to summon the government for anything? If they do, they a sellout? Well, I disagree with that. So when I see Bobby Rush sitting up in there, I'm not just saying he's a sellout. He's trying to do what he's trying to do for his community. Okay, so I don't, I don't know how y'all want to look at it, but there's just more ways than your than your, my way and your way. Um, but you know, for y'all to blame people whose jock straps you can't even hold, to me, is where the disconnect come in at, because. All of them were willing to put their lies out there in the front, in the way, before social media. Okay? And unless you can even do that, I'm not even trying to hear it. Because you couldn't hold these people's jock straps. None of them. So, I'm sorry with that being said. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.